Up until 2003, an Amber Alert had not been issued in the state of Washington. Throughout the state's history, no children, or in fact, any person had gone missing to the point of using this extreme method of emergency response. But all of that changed on February 4th, 2003, when it was reported that five-year-old Sofia Juarez had gone missing. Four-year-old Sofia Juarez was playing in her bedroom with her young uncles in their Kennewick, Washington home on the night of February 4th, 2003. Fast forward to the 2020s, almost two decades after the incident, and no one knew where Sophia was, let alone what had happened to her. But as social media became widely used, one TikTok video brought some hope into this case. It was a video of a woman in her 20s who claimed to have been kidnapped and didn't know where she was. Was it Sophia? And if so, what happened to her throughout all these years? It was now up to the people in charge of the investigation to meet the stranger and learn if finally Sofia had been found. Sofia Juarez was part of a lively Hispanic home on the 100 block of East 15th Avenue in East Kennewick, Washington. She lived with her mother Maria, her grandmother Ignacia, her grandma's boyfriend Jose Lopez Torres, and six aunts and uncles. As someone with Mexican roots, Sofia had dark hair and brown eyes. She also had a mole under one eye, a birthmark on the lower back, and her four upper front teeth missing. All of this information would later come in handy when trying to get people to provide any information on the missing child in case they saw someone who matched the profile. Surely, February 4th was an exciting day for Sophia as she was one day short of turning 5 years old. And so, when her grandma's boyfriend, Jose, said he was going to a convenience store nearby, she said she was going to join. In fact, Jose asked other people in the house to go with him, and none of them replied. Unfortunately, Jose left a bit too soon before realizing that Sophia had said that she wanted to go with him. Naturally, Sophia was a shy girl. She loved cartoons, coloring, and playing with her Barbie dolls. But the one thing she would never do was wander off by herself. That's why it was quite shocking to see Jose come back from the convenience store by himself. He bought some milk, made a call at a payphone to relatives in Mexico, and went back to the house at 9.45 p.m. without Sophia. Everyone was sure that Sophia had gone with him. In fact, Sophia's mom, Maria, was convinced that the girl had gone to the store with him because she even asked for a dollar before going. Maria even heard her when she left the house, wearing a red long sleeve shirt, blue overalls, violet socks, white Converse sneakers, and gold hooped earrings. And even though it was quite cold outside, Sophia left without a coat. And so, when Jose came back from the store, it had become evident that there had been some communication problem and Sophia never got to catch up with Jose. Maria quickly searched around for her daughter, but afraid she couldn't find her this late into the night. She contacted the police at 9.53 p.m. The police search radius started small and thorough, and it included Sophia's house, the yard, the family's vehicles, and other neighborhood properties such as parks, local businesses, fields, and vacant lots. Eventually, though, the search radius increased to a three-mile radius around the neighborhood, but Sophia was nowhere to be found. Family members and possible witnesses were then interviewed, while seven different patrol officers kept searching. Despite her young age, the data collected pointed out that it was very unlikely that Sophia had gone missing due to an injury or simply getting lost. It was immediately assumed that she had probably become a victim of a child abduction. In less than an hour, her story was already in the news, and many private citizens were ready to step in and help find the girl. They joined forces with the police, who were ready to conduct searches through the darkness with night vision and thermal imaging devices. They even went as far as searching dumpsters and residential garbage cans. And as soon as this case began gaining more public traction, the FBI also joined the investigation and joined forces with the Kennewick Police Department to help in the search for Sophia. The National Center for Missing and Exploded Children was also notified and a case manager inevitably got involved. And just like that, 
Washington State's first Amber Alert was issued. Sophia's name was entered into the Washington State and National Crime Information Center database as a missing endangered person, and soon enough, agencies in neighboring states were also notified to be active on the search for a girl who might have crossed Washington State's lines. Even the Royal Canadian Mounted Police got notified about the situation. For three days straight, the number of people involved in the search just kept growing, and yet, no one seemed to get close to finding Sophia. Dive and rescue members, incident management team personnel, and even fixed-wing aircraft and helicopters equipped with the latest technology at the time got involved in the search, in addition to a $5,000 reward offered by the Fraternal Order of Police. People were so eager to help the Juarez family stop this nightmare that some Crime Stoppers even offered a $1,000 reward on top of what the police were already offering. It's hard to see that innocent face, um, you know, but it's, it's good to know that it's going around and that people haven't lost hope. In the end, those first three days of searching were just the beginning of a never-ending story. Eight years later, the investigation continued and at least four different detectives were assigned to the case in the hopes of getting new perspectives. But despite hundreds of tips and increasing media coverage, the case seemed to be unable to come to a conclusion. Please return Sophia back to her mom. Return her safe. Sadly, Sophia's mom died just six years after her daughter went missing without finding out what had happened to her little girl. Nonetheless, nothing has stopped the police from believing that they'll find answers. They even created a webpage where people can submit any information that they have on the case. Moreover, they even claimed, if you were involved, it is important you know that we will not stop until we bring closure for Sophia's family and our community, regardless of how long it takes. Relationships you've had with others change over time. Allegiances that others may have once had to you are now different. They know about your involvement or, at the very least, are suspicious that you may be involved. This event has had a marked effect on your life. You have been looking over your shoulder since 2003. You may have trouble sleeping, maintaining employment, and or changed your consumption of alcohol and or drugs. Each tip brings us closer to you. It is time to relieve this heavy burden that you have carried. It is time to help yourself. We encourage you to contact us. The more exposure that we get, the more widespread that the media is to reach out and, and maybe just find that one person that has a piece of information that will help us to find out where she's at or what happened to her. With that statement, the police have kept their promise and some leads have come to light. First, the obvious, Sophia's father. The man had been absent from his daughter's life. Some sources say that he even refused to acknowledge Sophia as his daughter, but he was prompt to submit a believable alibi and was immediately ruled out as a suspect when she went missing. Also, since Sophia was shy, the mom was convinced that she could have only left her house if she had been with someone she was familiar with. Therefore, the police have kept a close eye on all relatives and people close to the family. That is why in 2003, Kennewick Police Chief Mark Hardin said, and I quote, everyone and no one is a person of interest. For almost two decades, the case seemed to be going nowhere until one day, a viral clip posted on TikTok made everyone feel hopeful. Ocupo que vengan por mí, porque la verdad no sé dónde soy, si soy de aquí o soy de allá. Le quiero mandar un saludo a mi tata y a mi nana. <laughs> si también de este programa quiero decirle que vengan por mí porque aquí estoy secuestrada. In that video, you just saw a young woman in Northwest Mexico speaking in Spanish and saying that she was 22 years old and that she had been kidnapped. In that short interview, she made her pleas to the audience asking that if her family was watching, that they should come to get her because she had no idea where she was from. And upon that video going viral on TikTok, the police immediately got in touch with that young woman as it seemed that finally, this nightmare was coming to an end. However, after they tested the woman's DNA, they determined that she was not Sophia. It was just another disappointing moment in this never-ending search. But when looking at it from the bright side, the more this case is talked about, 
the more people become aware of it. Now, thanks to over 75 tips, police say they have more potential leads, including a highly credible witness who identified a female matching Sophia's description walking along a sidewalk in Kennewick where she disappeared. Different witnesses have come forward throughout the years. One of them claims to have seen Sophia crying and being led to a van by a laughing male near where she lived, which is a promising lead that law enforcement have been investigating. Eventually, as we continue to generate those tips and generate information, uh, we are going to find out what happened to her and, and who's responsible. The authorities say they will keep searching until they find the closure that they've been looking for and they will keep taking every bit of information with all the seriousness it deserves. And as of right now, it seems like every person who has been affected or touched by this case is committed to getting closure, and they won't rest until they find Sofia Juarez.